Hi guys, uh, today I am going to explain you on GO3 bacterial inhibition assay test. Basically, GO3 bacterial inhibition assay is done to uh, for uh, screening phenylketonuria babies. So the phenylketonuria, so let me just give you a brief introduction to phenylketonuria. Phenylketonuria is because of deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme. Deficiency or mutation in a gene coding for this enzyme will give classic phenylketonuria. Whereas uh, there is another kind of keton, uh, phenylketonuria called non-classic phenylketonuria and that's because of deficiency or defect in dihydroteridine reductase enzyme. Anyway, so the phenylketonuria is uh, the newborn, all newborns are screened for phenylketonuria. How the screening is done? So one of the screening tests that we use is bacterial, GU3 bacterial inhibition assay. So that I am going to explain to you today. It is simply called as GU3 test. What they do in this particular test? Basically, a blood sample is taken from the baby by heel prick method. So in heel prick method, what they do? They, it, it is done like at 6th or 7th day after birth. It's just because we will give one week time for the phenylalanine content to come down. So before I explain GU3 test, let me give you the normal range for blood phenylalanine level. Okay. So from birth, at the time of birth to one week, phenylalanine, blood phenylalanine level will be 2 to 4 milligrams per 100 ml of blood, that is per deciliter. Now more than one week, one week uh, means after one week, so it will fall, it will be less than one milligram per deciliter. One week after normal blood phenylalanine levels will be less than one milligram per deciliter. Whereas in PKU, phenylketonuria patients, it will be more than 16 milligrams per deciliter. This is the normal range means normal range in two uh, states and then in phenylketonuria. During birth, like from birth to one week, it is between two to four milligram per deciliter, more than one week, less than one milligram per deciliter, and then PKU patients, 16, more than 16 milligram per deciliter. Now, when the Guthrie test is done, it is done at seventh day, sixth to seventh day, means by seventh day, your phenylalanine like uh, blood phenylalanine level will fall nearer to 1 milligram per deciliter. Obviously, it will be less than 2 to 4 milligram per deciliter at the end of 7th day. So, most of the time we take the blood sample at 7th day. Okay. So, the blood sample is taken by heel prick method on a uh, filter paper and that is sent to the laboratory. So, in the laboratory, that blood spot is taken and it will be placed on the petri dish which has got agar media and within that agar media so the bacterial spores are taken the, will be placed so i will write a blood sample here with the color here so the, this is consider this is the blood sample that has been placed on the agar media and now the spores of bacillus subtilis the spores that are used these from the bacillus subtilis Bacillus subtilis spores are taken and then on this agar media beta 2 thiinyl alanine beta 2 thiinyl alanine is added now on the petri dish with the agar media we have taken bacillus subtilis spores then beta 2 thiinyl alanine is added to that and then you have added a blood sample Okay, taken from the baby at seventh week. Okay, now if the baby's blood phenylalanine level is less than two to four milligram per deciliter, means after one week it should fall below two to four milligram per deciliter. So I'll write it as say if the phenylalanine is less than two to four milligrams per deciliter, what will happen? At this phenylalanine concentration, so we generally don't see the growth of bacillus subtilis. Why you don't see the colonies? You don't see the colonies. If the 
blood phenylalanine level is less than 2 to 4 mg per deciliter, you don't see any growth of bacillus subtilis. You don't see the colonies in the agar media. Why you don't see? It's because the beta 2 thionyl alanine, this chemical, it has got an inhibitory effect on bacillus subtilis spores. Means spores don't germinate. Okay. That is why there is no growth. You don't see any colonies. That means baby is normal. If, the, if you don't see colonies, it means the baby is fine. Phenylalanine concentration in the blood is fine and is a normal baby. Means baby do not have phenylketonuria. That's what it means. No colonies means no phenylketonuria. That's as simple as that. No colonies, no phenylketonuria. No PKU. Phenylketonuria is PKU. Now let's see what if the baby has got phenylketonuria. If the baby is having phenylketonuria, obviously the phenylalanine concentration will be 16 milligram, more than 16 milligram per deciliter. So it means blood phenylalanine level will be more. So I'll make it as more than 4 milligram per deciliter. More than 4 milligram. If the phenylalanine is more than 4 milligram, Obviously, it will be more than 16 milligram in PKU. So, upper range is 4 here. So, I'll just write, I'm writing it as more than 4 milligram. So, whenever the blood phenylalanine concentration is more than 4 milligram per deciliter, at that particular concentration, phenylalanine itself will have a negative effect on beta 2 thionyl alanine. So, excess phenylalanine, phenylalanine in high concentration whenever the concentration of phenylalanine in the blood is more than 4 mg per deciliter at that time phenylalanine will inhibit beta 2 thionyl alanine function means it is going to inhibit beta 2 thionyl alanine's inhibitory effect on sub bacillus subtilis spores so high concentration of phenylalanine will inhibit inhibitory effect of beta 2 thionyl alanine on bacillus subtilis it means inhibition of beta 2 beta 2 thionyl alanine on bacillus subtilis spores is taken off because phenylalanine is inhibiting beta 2 thionyl alanine at high concentration whenever it is at high concentration it means bacillus subtilis spores they germinate okay once they germinate so you can see the colonies so you see the bacterial colonies so appearance of bacterial colonies in the agar plate it is a positive sign it means when you see the colonies presence of colonies colonies means pku phenylketonuria that's the positive test so negative test means no colonies it means baby is fine positive test means colonies baby is suspected to have phenyl ketonuria so this is a screening test any test which comes out to be positive any guthrie test which is positive that particular sample blood uh, be, uh, blood sample should be sent to sent to the higher laboratories for confirmate confirmatory test confirmatory test is done using hplc based method hplc is high performance liquid chromatography based tests are done and in that test the exact quantity or the exact amount of phenylalanine is estimated in the blood itself. Now, if, if HPLC is available in the hospital, so you can directly do HPLC test. The only thing it is costly and also you need to have the test available there in the hospital. If the hospital do not have HPLC, a based mechanism to quantitate phenylalanine, so they will use the screening test first, that is Guthrie bacterial inhibition assay test any samples that comes out to be positive so they will be sent later to hplc based uh, methods for direct quantitation of phenyl alanine so that's all about screening and confirmation for phenyl ketonuria thanks for watching